<laughs> Coach, we're getting close to the start of the uh, spring match. Just the excitement of having those tickets sold out. Get ready for that next round of tickets to start going in. Yeah. Well, um, first of all, it's nice to see all you guys. Good to see. Volleyball is getting a little love now, so uh, our team's been working really hard. Uh, they're excited, uh, but the uh, hang on. This is a freshman, Olivia <laughs> Mock from Bennington. Who, that's okay. They can edit it. Live. They got nothing else to do. Players hydrated enough today. There's a lot of water left. Yeah. Uh, let's start over. It's good to see you guys. Our team's working really hard. The, regards to the Carney match. Every year. I'm never surprised what happens and how people camp out and how much demand our tickets are and, and for us to share our team with another part of the state of Nebraska. I'm never surprised by it, but uh, also we never take it for granted. And we're so appreciative of that and we're gonna go out there and put on a great show and um, really make those fe people feel a part of Nebraska volleyball. And it's a great opportunity for our players to give back. What are you looking to get out of it? What's the goal going into it, just from a play standpoint? Um, like I said, share our team with Carney or the, the people that are there in that area of the state uh, and um, get uh, our players, um, especially Olivia and Skyler, get them thrown into a match where, I mean, that's going to be like a big time college match. And um, so mainly that, and then give back, like I, said, like I said, give back at the end with signing autographs. And, and we do some other things while we're out there. We go out the day before. So it's just an opportunity for our players to give back in a lower key setting, which we don't can't do in the fall, and make those our fans feel appreciated. You announced it as being at Carney High and then changed it. Was that Carney High coming to you, or are you coming to them and saying, um, go bigger? That was... Uh, Lindsay could explain it better, but that was, I think, um, other people getting involved uh, at a higher level, and they were sensing that demand was going to be so much they wanted to expand it. So somehow, administrators got involved and they, they moved it to Kearney so we could get more people in the stands. So that was kind of how that evolved, and Lindsay was in the middle of all that, and um, uh, it wasn't my decision. And originally, just so you guys know, we, we were trying to go up to, uh, Lindsay, what, Ewing, Nebraska, I summer, like summer Ed Eddieville, and that was O'Neill. But when football moved to the 27th for their spring game, we had to move to May 4th. So that eliminated a lot of teams we could play. Denver was still training at the time. And those schools all had graduation that weekend. So we couldn't interrupt graduation. And so Kearney was third on the list, and that's why we, we ended up in Kearney. So, um, if those guys want to be mad at anybody, they can be mad at football and Coach Rule. Is Becca practicing? She's back in practice, uh, I'd say about 80% of everything we're doing. We've been gradually working her back in, but every day she looks better and better. And she, I, mean, it's, I mean, she was off for like nine weeks, basically. So it's, uh, but the good, the good news is she's back in practice every day and, and Looks like what, what the procedure she had done is, is paid off. Sean Alley involved with practices too. Is that kind of, you invited her to continue with training with the team or what was that decision? Allie's still a Husker till she leaves. So uh, we, she wanted to uh, still train and, and be with us. And um, we've done that before. And, um, you know, uh, even though her plan is to transfer the, uh, you know, we still take care of them while they're here. So uh, I would rather err on the side of taking care of our players than uh, I, I know some of our transfers coming and they can't do anything, be in the weight room, nothing. Those schools have basically banned them. And I just be hard for me to sleep at night doing that. Have you seen Olivia and Sky acclimate and get used to playing at this level? They're, they have been the highlight of the spring in beach. And I, I did a big podcast today, and I gave those guys credit for We had probably the best beach season we've ever had, best wins, most wins. Uh, and I credit those two elevated our beach team to, to be able to win another. I mean, those guys had a legit shot of winning every time they played. And that elevated our you know, a team of, we have five teams, but that really, they really elevated another team to a higher level. And 
I give them a lot of credit, and they're they're doing awesome in here. Those those two those two guys are special, and they've come in and are doing a great job. Is that anything that you've tried to help bring out of them? Is that something they just naturally have brought with them? I I, I think they're special. I think they're special kids. Uh, they're they're competitors. They're talented. Uh, both have been in the USA program, which I think really helps them at this level. Um, they're They've transitioned great. I mean, Livia's in Bennington, so it's not like there's a big homesickness thing from there. And um, I mean, and Skyler's just, um, just. I mean, I think she's been ready to come here for a couple of years. So it's it's been a really smooth transition, and those guys have been really pleased with them. I, at the end of week one last week, I mean, that was the first thing on our whiteboard was how well those freshmen did the first week. So very very. Please, and those guys are getting after it really well. Have you noticed Skyler or Olivia gravitating towards a specific returning player, any of the upperclassmen at all? They, they, with all of them, there's, I mean, look who Olivia gets to train next to, Lexi and Laney. <laughs> so, I mean, that's pretty cool. And, uh, but she can hold her own, and, um, and Skyler, um, you know, we're, we're playing all the outsides at all the positions, so they're all rotating, and, you know, they're all, you know, merits the mom and really takes care of those guys. What was on your list of priorities when spring practice started for this month? Uh, servant pass. Uh, we want to work on improving our offense, timing, rhythm, attack, and how we do things. Uh, our out of system offense. Um, those are the main things. And uh, um, you know, the other big challenge is. You know, we got all the way the we won the Big Ten and got all the way to the national championship. How do we get better? What's our mindset to come in and get better? And I use Merritt and Lexi as examples. They're first team All Americans. You know, how much more room can they grow? Well, if those two can get better and take everybody with them. We're getting better as a team because they have the the biggest challenge on improvement, and because um, they're already at such a high level. So that's been the other big focus is. How do those guys get better? And so they have goals they've set and things they're working on and, and uh, they're held accountable to it every day. Coach, now that you're like four months out from that title game, how much does it still linger? Can, do you sense that it's a motivator in how the team has trained and how they've practiced since then? Um, you have to ask those guys that. For me, it's, you know, we've, <laughs> We've won national championships, we've lost national championships. I and mean, when you get the Final Four, you got a 25% chance of winning, basically. So uh, uh, for us, it's, we try to learn from it. How can we get better? Um, and it's just not only what we're doing as a team, but where we broke down, but also mentally, you know, how can we get better? And that's been my focus, is how can we learn from that and make sure it doesn't happen again? Who's impressed you so far in camp? The freshmen. Those, those are, I'll, I'll put them at the top of the list every time right now. They're, they've they've really surprised me, and I think you have to ask our players too. I think they're like, wow. I mean, Skyler's already taken three players at left front's heads off on on left side attack, which is we've got girls that have never done that. So uh, for freshmen, you're just kind of like, wow. So it's pretty cool. How has Lindsay been integrated back into practice? I know she missed into last year too. It was getting close, but has been any lingering? No, no. She it took her a while on beach to get going. Uh, in the first couple of days in here, I could tell she was a little tentative, which is is uh, natural because you now in beach you're not you don't have people under, at the net t tight. So she but she's really worked into it, and we've worked on getting comfortable being around the net. We've done some drills for everybody's because we want to learn from that injury and, and that not let that happen again. So, uh, yeah, but she's, she's doing great. How do those early, that early, uh, the freshmen coming in this early, you know, beach volleyball, but also with the training camp, how's that kind of, you know, we've heard for football for years, but now with volleyball, you know, how's that, effect, you know, helping out? Well, it gives us a chance we can play anytime six on six. We have a lot of bodies. I mean, I know there's teams right now that can't scrimmage because they don't have enough players. Um, but what it also does, it gets those guys in our program, gets them on our lifting program. So we jumpstart them nine months ahead of when we start. And so it's a huge advantage going into the fall, having gone through an off season. And then they get, they get to be here in the summer, they're acclimated, they're over 
adjustments. They get to work camps. Of course, Olivia or uh, Olivia will be going with the USA team, and um, so you know if she was doing that, she wouldn't be here till July, middle of July, if she hadn't already been here. So there's a lot of advantages to it. You have five Huskers selected on the USA teams. Um, how can that help them develop when they're younger as high school players, but then also in college? Well, it's first of all, they're going to go into a gym with 20 great players, so the competition is great. Then if they make the team, they get to go play against international teams. Different ball, different rules, and every team's got different styles, so it's a great learning opportunity anytime you get to play internationally, because Cuba is different than Dominican and to Canada. It's just it's very, very different where in club volleyball, a lot of the teams are the same. And even in college, a lot of teams, you see the same things over and over. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful experience. And um, the timing of it this year works out great because it's in June. So it's not, last year, you know, it was in September, the World Championships. So none of them could go. So a lot of them really like it. And um, so it's pretty cool we got five and some others that are in there. Jalen's one of those others too. It's good to have yeah. him be along for the ride. Yeah, I don't I don't really like him leaving, but the dates just work out perfect for ending camp. The, the block we have from ending camp to when we start recruiting JOs because it's so late this year works out perfect. So he'll fly from Toronto, meet me in Vegas, and we're recruiting the Junior Olympics. And he's here through our June camps. So the dates, no, normally I, he wouldn't go if the if we had conflicts, but it just worked out great this year. Final questions for yeah. Coach? What's it like to have so many players back from the previous season? It's, it's awesome for spring. You feel like you really get something, you can get something done. And um, again, I know we've had springs where you're just trying to keep them happy and motivated, and you really can't do a whole lot. And you know, we have to have guys play, and, or you know, practice players play. We've had to do that in spring matches, or you know, so. It's just really nice in the last couple of years, having this big group, I think really, really helps jumpstart us for 2024 season. Yes. Does it make you to get those transfers in as well a little later in the uh, semester? Yeah, they'll all be here uh, into May uh, after they graduate. And um, uh, so it'd be good to acclimate those guys in here. What do you think they can add to this team? Well, Taylor I, and I don't know, I can't really talk about them yet, so. So. Are you going to scrimmage anybody else besides Denver this spring? Uh, we have a close scrimmage against a team uh, in two weeks. Coach, we haven't really talked to you here since the change in athletic director. Your name was at least floated in that. Can you just provide some perspective on whether that was ever a consideration for you and what your relationship has been like so far with Troy? Uh, I've just had one interaction with him. That's been it. He's got a lot going on. and. Uh, no, that was not my goal, was to be the athletic director. So uh, I want to do everything I can to help our athletic department be the best we can be. And that's what I told them and, and, um, and continue to, you know, have Nebraska Volleyball set the standard for every program in the country. Obviously, volleyball had a huge growth season this last year, but also women's basketball is doing huge numbers this year. How have you seen women's athletics grow in general just over these last few years? Well, at Nebraska, it's been great because don't count on soccer. They had a heck of a year. So you got soccer, volleyball, women's basketball have all set the standards. So that's how we want to be. We want to be competing for championships, and Nebraska should be in that position, and women's sports is doing their job. All right. Thanks, okay. Coach. Thanks, Coach. Lindsay's all